Nirmal, now you spoke about the broader markets and the outlook as far as strategy is concerned. Let's get a little sector specific and discuss your outlook when we talk about the export-oriented ones because that's really been the key darling of the market in terms of kind of outperformance that these sectors have seen. Do you think that will continue going forward from here? Yeah, I think that will continue. And at this point in time, what we are recommending to our uh, clients and investors is a semi-aggressive portfolio. So have a significant part of your portfolio, say around 60-70% in uh, defensive stocks with, that are in IT pharma sectors and a very select uh, consumer discretionary. But other than that, part of your portfolio, you can also put in capital goods like, uh, you know, and the stocks which are uh, well-run companies but have been uh, bitten down because of the cyclical downturn uh, in capital goods sector. And then we are still recommending to our investors that avoid uh, the infrastructure, power, or you know these uh, uh, industrials or these cyclical stocks. So that is how one should build portfolio at this point in time. You know, the other thing the market's been tracking very closely as far as sectors are concerned is the telecom pack right now, simply in the back of what's happening as far as the auctions are concerned. Never mind, what's your, been, what's your reading been of the auctions, the way it's spanning out, and what could this actually imply for the industry in terms of costs? I, yeah, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, unless the outcome is there, uh, it's very difficult to comment on it. But I would say that it doesn't augur well because uh, the way the entire thing is happening, uh, uh, the, the certain players would like to bid for certain sectors and, you know, the, uh, the bids can, be, can go up aggressively. So at this point in time, uh, uh, and the price competitiveness in the market is such that there won't be uh, much margin left. So... I would say that the sector had a good run or a good period in the last one or two years, but until uh, these results of auctions are out, uh, we should wait and watch. Mm. Anything on the banking sector as well? Because that's really been the other heavy way that seems to be lagging a little bit in terms of its weightage on the index and as well, uh, as well as the exposure also is concerned from the institution side. What are your thoughts when we talk about the banking pack? So in our semi-aggressive portfolio, we would say that you, know, you can bet on some of the private sector banks. We still say that avoid PSU banks, although many valuations look very attractive, but there's a scare and that can be real that NPS can be much higher than what people expect. And next two quarters will be very crucial in what comes out in their quarterly results in terms of provision for NPS as well as the NPA numbers. Uh, so the stress is very significant and, uh, you know, the 13 rate hikes and then two more rate hikes basically have them have caused a lot of damage to the investor sentiment and uh, the investment sentiment of entrepreneurs. Uh, given that, uh, and also that the cycle has been on the downturn on one hand, and suddenly the restructuring of the loans is being viewed with a lot of caution. So I think next two, three quarters will be very crucial for PSU banks. But still in the portfolio, if you have to have bank, and you must have some banks, I would say go for private sector banks and go for banks that are more retail-oriented. And then, well, the other interesting trend that we've seen in the market of late has been the kind of outperformance that's coming in from the mid-cap space. Now, clearly, the, the benchmark indices are just a couple of points off from the LIFI that we'd seen a, a few months back or so. But in the mid-cap space, do you think it's the hunt for value, the hunt for return that's getting them attractive right now? What, what, what is your thought when we talk about the recent outperformance coming in from the mid-cap segment? Yes, there will always be a bottom-up stock picking and hunt for value and bargain hunting. Uh, and, uh, you know, as uh, the sentiment is, the underlying bias is still a little positive on the expectations of positive outcome of the elections. And if there is a, indeed a positive outcome in a stable government, then markets can have a very good rally also. And at that point in time, I would say the mid will outperform because the valuations are attractive. Having said this, one should be cautious because these, uh, all these stocks are very high beta. Whenever sentiment turns negative, uh, even the fall... They become illiquid. It's very difficult to exit a larger portfolio. And also, uh, because of illiquidity, you see that the fall is sharper. And uh, so if one has a longer-term view of three to five years at least, then you can do value picking in mid-cap stocks, which have good fundamentals, attractively valued, and, you know, you don't mind holding it for three to five years, then one should go for it. But uh, if your horizon is maybe uh, shorter-term and trading-oriented, uh, then one should be cautious. Nimal, I, don't, I know you don't like to really answer this question very often, but the point is you said there could be upside if the election outcome is favorable. Any number that you're estimating, any number that you're working with that the markets could see in terms of potential returns? In fact, if there's a stable government and a positive outcome to elections, I wouldn't be surprised if in this calendar year market gives 20-25% return. You know, we've been talking about the outlook on the market front out here, but 
you know, we spoke about election, Nirmal out here. The other key overhang, to a certain extent, has also been the RBI strategy. What, what are your expectations in terms of the rate trajectory going forward from here? Because clearly, from the RBI standpoint, it's all about inflation right now. H how are you reading that? And what are your expectations in terms of rates? I think what RBI is trying to do is more manage expectations or perceptions because uh, there are two factors here. One is that RBI's rate hike is not getting transmitted either in deposit rate or lending rate. So to some extent, it becomes a theoretical uh, number in the current environment. And two, uh, a significant part of inflation is driven by uh, food stocks, uh, the food prices and the fuel prices. And both these product categories have no correlation whatsoever with the monetary policy or action on the front of policy rates. But you know, in the environment where RBI has to set expectations or RBI has to uh, you know, go in line with the policy objective of managing inflation, I think if inflation remains stubbornly high, it's very difficult to expect that RBI will oblige with rate cuts. 